begin. In this example, you will learn how to apply the force-based approach to solve for reactions in a one degree statically indeterminate frame. Got a simple portal frame that we're going to be examining here. Want you to recognize a couple of things as we move forward. The beam has a moment of inertia of I, whereas the columns are 40% of that. We want to confirm that indeed we are statically indeterminate to the first degree. So let's look at the reactions that we've got down there. We've got a total of four reactions. We have made no cuts in this and so we have one structural piece. For each structural piece we have three equations of equilibrium so that gives us a total of three here. And so we've got four minus three means that we are statically indeterminate to the first degree. With this, we want to go ahead and select RDX as the redundant. I'm going to simply make a comment. If you were to have selected RAY or RDY as your redundant, what would have happened is you would have ended up with an unstable structure. Let me just demonstrate that very quickly here. Let's assume that you took this force off. Now look what happens. Look at all the rest of your reactions they all act through point D, thus becoming unstable because all reactions are coincident. So really the only choices we had for selecting redundance was to select one of the horizontal reactions there. So for my primary structure I will remove the reaction at DX. I'm just gonna sketch kind of a rough deflected shape here just so that I can label this accordingly. This will be delta D and this is my primary structure. My horizontal reaction here comes out to be 2.5 kips. My vertical reaction is 20.21 kips and this is just using statics. My vertical reaction here 22.99 kips. Now my redundant structure is where I take off all the other loads and I only place on it my redundant load. So it's that unknown redundant, RDX. And I'm going to assume it's acting to the right. And when I do that, it's going to create a deflected shape that looks something like this. And this displacement, in fact, I'm just going to give me a little bit of a leader line, that displacement there we will label as the displacement at D due to a force at D. Of course this can be rewritten in terms of the flexibility coefficient and the redundant. So RDX multiplied by FDD where FDD is the displacement at D due to a unit load at D. So we take our primary structure and our redundant structure and we add those together and the purpose of adding those together is to get the compatibility equation so we take the primary structure, delta D, plus the redundant structure, delta DD, and it had better equal, the displacement D, had better equal what it was in the original structure. And so in the original structure, my displacement in the X direction here was indeed zero. So we will go ahead and write it as such. That compatibility equation in and of itself we can rewrite just a little bit and we will do that in terms of the flexibility coefficient and finally rewrite that to solve for the redundant force that becomes the compatibility equation so to solve for the unknown redundant force I need to compute a couple of deflections here so delta D FDD. FDD is what we get from the flexibility structure. That is when we place a unit load. Let me just go ahead and sketch what that deflected shape looks like. We place a unit load and the displacement there due to that unit load is that flexibility coefficient. Because we are dealing with a frame, this is not going to be something we can use the beam charts for. 
So we are going to go ahead and use virtual work. Now I'm going to move through this relatively quickly. The purpose of this video is not to teach you how to do virtual work, but rather we will be using virtual work to achieve the goal of computing these two deflections. So first thing I want to do, if I'm using virtual work and I'm going to use visual integration, I want to go ahead and sketch moment diagrams, or more specifically, M over EI diagrams that will then represent the primary structure and later will represent the flexibility structure. So let me go ahead and get these sketched. For this vertical column is triangular and it has a moment that is 2.5 times 10 feet so it is 25 divided by 0 0.4 I Associated with that we need an area. That one is going to be A equals 312.5 EI and we know that the centroid is at a distance of two-thirds this entire length. For the beam, because it's got a distributed load and it's also going to have shear in it, we are going to generate superimposed moment diagrams. Here's due to the uniform load. By the way, I'm using the method of superposition here. That's essentially selecting point B as the point of cantilever on this. So I've got this at being negative 388.8 EI. And then I'm also going to have a straight line here, 413.8 EI, and I can get the areas for this. If you don't know how these areas are gotten, go back and review the material on virtual work and the use of visual integration. In this area here, 3724.4 EI. We will need to know where the centroids are for this. For this second order moment diagram, this is three quarters of the length over. And the centroid for this is over two thirds that distance. And then lastly, for the rightmost column, it is a zero moment in there. The next thing I'm going to have to do before I can compute for the deflection is I need to sketch a virtual structure. So I will place a unit load wherever I want to know the deflection. Please do not confuse this structure with the flexibility structure. This is nothing more than a virtual structure used to calculate deflection in the primary structure itself. It will produce a moment diagram. And this is your little m diagram. It's constant across here little m diagrams and these have value of 10, 10, 10, and 10. We need to map this back over here recognizing where the centroids are. That's two-thirds L, three-quarters L, two-thirds L. So let's come back here. I'm going to come up here that two-thirds L figure out what that value is there. And using similar triangles, 6.67 is what I will get. I also will get this here at 3 quarters L. Get that value there of 10. I'll come over here at 2 thirds L. Get that value of 10. And this one doesn't get used because the big M over EI diagram is zero. I am now prepared to put together my computation for the displacement at D. So 312.5 over EI times 6.67 plus 37, 24.4. EI times 10 plus a negative 
332.8 EI times 10 and this will be equal to a positive 16,000 EI. So that is simply the displacement that occurs in the primary structure. I now need to compute the displacement that happens in the flexibility structure. So this is what we've got coming back here and very quickly we can identify that the reaction here is 1, reaction here is 0, here is 0. So I can construct my M over EI diagrams for my flexibility structure. I'll have a triangular one here, rectangular here, triangular there. Values of this are going to be 10 divided by 0 0.4 EI. This will simply be 10 over EI and 10 over 0 0.4 EI there. Areas can be computed here equals 125 over EI. Area here is 180 over EI course over here the area is 125 EI. Centroidal locations since it's a triangle it's up two-thirds this is a rectangle it's over a half and since this is a triangle two-thirds. Okay now ask yourself how do I calculate the deflection in that flexibility structure? I need the M over EI diagram due to the real load. The real load is that unit load I placed on it. I also need a virtual structure wherein I place a virtual load. That will generate my little M diagrams. So this will come out to be 10, 10, 10, and triangular here, 10. Look back and we will notice that our centroids are two-thirds L, L over two, two-thirds L. So let's come back here and I want to come up this two-thirds L, pick off this value right there and that is 6.67. I want to pick off the value here that is that distance L over two. That's a value of 10. And then here 2L over 3 and that is 6.67. I'm now prepared to make the calculation for the deflection and that will be 1 times FDD is equal to 125 EI times 6.67. I've got two of those areas, two of those situations going on plus 180 EI times 10. This will give me 3,467.5 over EI. I'm finally prepared to plug these back into the compatibility equation to solve for RDX. So that was my delta D. I need to divide that by my flexibility coefficient. Thirty-four sixty-seven point five EI. This will be equal to negative four point six one kips. Now what does the negative mean? Negative means I had assumed the wrong direction. So that means it is acting towards the left. So I'm just going to write this in as negative 4.61. I will save you the trouble of sitting through the remainder of the reaction calculations using equilibrium. Here's the result of 43.2 kips 
and that is located over here a distance of 9 feet. If we do this, we would then find the, the reaction of X is 2.11 kips acting to the right. We would get R dy is equal to 22.99 kips acting up, and R a y is equal to 20.21 kips acting in the up direction. In fact, you should notice R dy and R a y have the same reactions as they did in the primary structure, meaning we could have solved for those using just equilibrium before we ever took any special approach. And that is also why they were not eligible to be used as redundant forces. That concludes this example. As always, it's a beautiful day for studying structures.